In this video we'll be taking a quick look at these tiny arcade cabinets. The thing that's really interesting about these is that they actually contain playable versions of the arcade games. Now at the time of putting this video together these aren't for sale outside the US so I've imported mine from there using Amazon. I will say though I have seen them on eBay at ridiculous prices so just be careful don't pay too much for one of these after all they are just novelties. Now here is the Pac-Man arcade cabinet. Each cabinet uses the same design two buttons and a joystick of course Pac-Man doesn't really need two buttons but the middle one is the start and as you can see here we've got a full colour tiny LCD screen rendition of the full Pac-Man game. These are officially licensed games as well, of course. At the moment, there are four different cabinets available. I've bought the full set because I wanted to demonstrate them in this video, but it does get quite expensive if you decide to do that. I also want to say that you can get the cabinet out of the packaging and put it back in again without damaging the box itself, which is nice for those people that like to leave these things on display in the box. Now to start it up, switch it off, switch it back on again. That takes it out of that demo mode and into the normal mode. To start a game, you press the middle button and then in Pac-Man's case, you're just using the joystick on the left, which is a four-way controller, of course. And despite the fact it's got this tiny, tiny little screen, I was able to clear the first few levels of Pac-Man. So it functions perfectly. Also, I should mention that I'm looking through the camera's viewfinder at the screen here that the camera's recording. It's a weird setup. It's just because the screen is so small, I had to have the lens right up against it so you could get a good image in this video. But it does make it quite tricky to play. Now, sometimes the size of things doesn't come across well in videos because, of course, they're zoomed up. So to give you a point of reference, the screen is about the same size as my thumb. So just look down at your thumb and imagine trying to play Pac-Man on something that size. Now, around the back of the cabinet, you'll have noticed a key ring. I can't imagine many people hanging their keys off one of these, but I'm glad that that key ring hides out of the way when the cabinet's viewed from the front. And I should mention that it runs on three AAA batteries. Okay, so moving on to the other games, we'll start with Galaxian, and I'll say that I found this the hardest of the bunch to play, because of course, as well as using the joystick, we're using a fire button on the right-hand side here, and we've also got to keep our eye on very small objects on that screen to avoid them hitting your ship, so it's quite tricky, but again, the controls are functioning perfectly, the game functions how it should do, the sound is right, it's a fun novelty, that's the way to think about it. Now, Ms. Pac-Man is as playable as normal Pac-Man. I do feel perhaps the ghosts are moving a little bit slowly on this one, but I still had a lot of fun playing it. And one of the very important features of a good Pac-Man game is the controls in the fact that you can press up before you get to the next junction and then the Pac-Man moves up when it gets there. Anticipating is important in the controls. You don't want to have to be pixel perfect on a screen that's this small. So it's very playable again and I had a lot of fun with this one. Now I should really mention the graphics on these cabinets because they're really nice from the side art to the marquee at the top. Now as far as Space Invaders goes, well it's never been one of my favourite games but because it runs a little bit slower than Galaxian it's perhaps more suited to playing on a tiny screen like this. Now I'm just letting it play in demo mode here so that you can see the screen a little bit clearer rather than me shaking it around and putting my thumbs in the way. I should also mention at the top there the high score that's retained even after you've switched it off and back on again as long as you don't remove the batteries if you take the batteries out you'll lose those high scores but as you can see on Galaxian my high score of a grand total of 1560 is still in the machine. For some reason, the idea of collectible tiny arcade cabinets that contain versions of games that are almost too small to be playable, but yet yeah, are still playable, really does appeal to me. I should also mention, if you turn the lights off, you'll notice the marquees across the top are backlit as well, which I think is a really nice bit of detail. Now, if you want to get hold of these, well, they're a little bit expensive if you're outside the US. Within the US, I think they make a great stocking stuffer for Christmas or a present for someone that you know likes arcade machines. I'll put some links to Amazon in the video description if you're interested anyway. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.